your person so my presentation is not fantastic so uh, <laughs> just very technical so it might be difficult to you so I'm afraid that so uh, this topic what is the subject of spatial planning so I'm not familiar with uh, your field your area and your concern but I'm trying to uh, share so my knowledge my experience with you uh, for the Vera uh, Inside is still hot, so I'm very and I'm cool there. So, uh, can I take off my jacket? Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, in Korea, so uh, the missus are uh, taking off both these missus to step down from their position. <laughs> Yes, my topic is this marine system service and special planning and maintenance. But so, um, are you familiar with the terms marine ecosystem services or ecosystem services? Hands, please. Wait. And then, how about the special planning and the special management? Wow. <laughs> so, you're so an expert in the field of this uh, too. Yeah, this is my so advice so, uh, for communication with you. So uh, I would like to this session so uh, communication rather than so training. So uh, because the, uh, I understand that all of you in this room so uh, you are very expert in your own field. But this is my own field. But just just to uh, share my knowledge and my experience. So this is free is very simple. But my slide is, is over 60. But uh, I'm afraid that how can I deal with my over 60 the presentation slide, slide with you? But I'm going to speak of my presentation and then it's very concisely in a special uh, topic. So, so I think that so, uh, most countries and uh, so, uh, our communities, did, uh, our countries did, Committees, the uh, management of the area is involved to like this, like this way. So, uh, so land area focused, and then they are transferred to the coastal area. But nowadays, our concern is going to deep sea and far away from our mainland. For, for example, the Arctic Sea and the deep sea, high sea, and something like that. So that is why the international society they are trying to, to make a new legal and institutional mechanism to manage the high sea or the off sea or the deep sea area. That is the uh, very typical way of evolution of our spatial management. Uh, I think that this uh, diagram I'm familiar with you. So uh, this is about the uh, integrated system and sustainable development. So integrated system this means there are five components. First is spatial integration, that means it's a land and sea integration. The second of the intergenerational generation is uh, present and then uh, the future. And intergovernmental and uh, so international. But I would like to highlight this component of the integration of the science and policy. Um, so, uh, in the right time, so I talk with uh, Chris. I think he is one of my child is uh, trying to pull him. We talk up about the uh, sort of tension between the scientists and policy makers. There are some gap between two uh, groups in terms of decision making or in terms of the, some um, uh, some um, application of data and information. Like that. But I think that so now is the um, these two the component of integration is much more uh, much more important than any other component areas. And by integrating this uh, this component, so uh, we could achieve the sustainable development. Sustainable development include three the major pillars. One is the environmental uh, sustainability. You can't the sustainability and the social inequality. The three major pillars of the composed of the sustainable concept. Uh, I think this uh, 
the opportunity with this the, the framework. This is the framework. This is about the it's very typical planning mechanism. So even though this slide, this uh, the picture is the, uh, raised by the UNESCO IOC in 2006 and 2009, but I think that this kind of planning mechanism is a very, very typical and very, very conventional uh, system. So uh, every, uh, everybody, so, uh, 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 so when it comes to the digital making, they have to, the first step is to identify the issue. And after that, so they have to set a goal. And after that, so they have, they have to arrange the activities and implementation and evaluation. So that is a very typical cycle of the digital making in terms of the space and resource management. <coughs> so uh, that is the uh, uh, adaptive and self-evolving policy orientation in planning and digital making. So issue identification and program preparation and adoption funding, implementation, evaluation. So one cycle it takes uh, usually seven years. So in most uh, countries, that is one cycle. So even though you completed one cycle. We call it one generation, so you will to face new emerging issues. So that is the why we need to uh, we need to iterate this kind of cyclic mechanism. So uh, this is very uh, the basic concept of the planning. So the planning system is the, there are two major components that composed in there. So end and means. End is our goal, our target. Means is a tool how to how to deal with how to achieve our goal. So that is the, about the means. Means is coming from the spaces that call the social climate practice and science technology. That is this um, so uh, will contribute to so to make a means to achieve the, our end, our goals. So, so when it comes to uh, our decision making of the means, that means is, is uh, what means is uh, uh, appropriate to achieve our goals and our end. So we have the three, we have to think of the three feasibility. First one is the scientific scientific and technical feasibility, second one political feasibility that is the support from our public, our society. And the last one economic feasibility. Even though uh, even those uh, has to uh, achieve uh, has, has achieved uh, scientific feasibility and political feasibility. If you don't have money, if you don't have budget in your budget, you can implement uh, these means. You can adapt these means. That is why we need to consider the three feasibilities when it comes to this generation of means. So, but we even though we are with the, the general uh, generic concept and then so the typical cyclic uh, cycle system, but so I think that there is in details. So uh, everybody are with the, the term or concept sustainable development. But so when it comes to down, and when it comes to uh, going down to our uh, real world, there are from many countries within the economic sector and also. Uh, because you have to be in this tourism sector. But I'd like to share the, um, the economy and the cloud. They share the loop. They are like a twins. So when you go back to the Greek area, so the cloud, the means is just a household. That is icons. And the economy means is norm of household. That is twins. But in so uh, in the society evolving, so uh, after our uh, industrial revolution, I think that they are separated. So nowadays, many people say that, many people think of that, the economy is the opposite of the, the class. But I think that I share the, uh, the our history of our language, but I think they are trees. That means it's that this is we have the potential to harmonize the economy. Uh, your point and the classical modern protection expertise. So that is this uh, um, complete 
at the mat, uh, conflict matrix uh, occurred in our ocean and coastal areas. There are so many activities in our coastal and ocean areas. But some of them has the uh, conflict, high heavy uh, conflict with the other activities. But some of them um, less conflict. But some of them uh, will harmonize each other. So uh, this is the uh, spatial management map of the Belgian government um, established in 2014. Um, but uh, it took 10 years to prepare these the management systems. And there are so many, there has been so many conflict on our stakeholders. They have to harmonize, they have to reconcile the conflict to the make this map. So this map is, is, a, uh, is not just a, a picture. It's just a, it, it is it is the uh, social consensus through the long standing so uh, conflict resolution process. So how to ecosystem service and plan? So that is the, uh, our main topic of this session. Uh, ES system has the uh, composed of three activities, assessment, and evaluation, and application. So application is uh, quite relevant to the planning the system. But I'm not sure that, so um, how many people at this room so uh, recognize the uh, ecosystem services? What is the service? So how do you think of the service? How do you define the service? So in Korea, so sometimes I um, I give a talk to uh, our Korean students about their marine ecosystem services, but they do not understand the service. What is the service? The ecosystem service is quite difficult to understand. So they say that. So, uh, but so many people, almost people, uh, they are. Enjoy. They are enjoy the services every day. Medical service, education service, and healthcare service. And this one, yeah, that's the service. Service is just the um. Food. Yeah, four. Yeah, the service is just as uh, about that. Uh, so uh, something that works. So a medical service. So doctor works, and then hotel service, and then hotel works. Some education service and teachers work. That is about work. The, also the, uh, the made by some people. That is we call the service. So what is the uh, ecosystem service that we can understand? So uh, the medical service, education service. And the hotel service and taxi service is very easy, but ecosystem service that is about ecosystems works. So people works, we pay them. Ecosystem works, we do not pay them. So uh, my topic is about them. Why don't why do we don't pay at the full the ecosystem works? Right. 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 And there are some conflict about this. Uh, uh, so uh, we do have to pay the full ecosystem services or not. But some people say that we have to pay. But some people say that we don't need to the pay. But there are some arguments. But nowadays, many people the say that. So much more people. Uh, increasingly understand that so the importance of the ecosystem works. So uh, that is the, uh, published in 2005. So that is about the ecosystem and its relation to the human being. So uh, 
from 2001 to 2005, almost 2,000 almost 2, experts were engaged in publication of this the report. We call this synthesis report about ecosystem and human well-being. So uh, according to this marine, we call it the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. According to Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, there are four major services from our ecosystem. First one is the um, supporting system and then provisioning, regulating, cultural. So do you understand this one does it? Yeah, great. Yeah, so provisioning. So uh, I think that in this morning, so you had a breakfast and you ate many things on the shelf in the restaurant. So vegetables and the salmon and then the peanuts, something like that. That is the provisioning sources from our ecosystems. That is the food, the fuel. That is the uh, provisioning service. And regulating services is just a uh, uh, climate change. Uh, it is about climate change or it is about the purification of the, our ecosystems. So when it comes to our tidal wetland and then our the aquatic ecosystem, they have the function of function to purify some pollutants, some pollution. We call it so regulating other services. Or and then carbon sequestration by our um, the trees and then cigarettes and then so crop. So we call it so uh, regulating services. They is regulating our climate change. They is very help uh, contribute they are contribute to the uh, mitigate some impact of climate change. And cultural service is about the aesthetic, recreation and tourism or insight from our ecosystems. That is about the cultural services. And a supporting services, we cannot calculate the supporting services. The supporting services is just a, a like a sum, the three of the uh, supporting services is just the support, three services. We call it services, we call it supporting services. Just this about this or, um, the toil, uh, soil, or the nutrient cycle. That is this about the supporting services. So without supporting services, the data ecosystem was could not provide three services, provisioning, limiting, and cultural. So I mentioned that. So this is the service. So, so you pay it, right? But so you do not pay at for the ecosystem works. <laughs> so we have to pay at for the works of the, our ecosystems. There is the ecosystem works, there is human works. There are so many benefits from our ecosystems. So the carbon sequestration and the purification and then uh, so uh, this data or some um, the fuel and then so the food that is this substance from our ecosystems. So uh, this is a brief history of the uh, ecosystem service uh, concept development in our society. So I would like to highlight this so the publication of Kostanz and his the colleagues in 2000, in 1997, so uh, in um, uh, the Journal of Nature. So Kostanz uh, and his colleagues uh, uh, the, the published the, the first article about that, uh, so global the valuation of our ecosystems. According to his, uh, he and uh, his dear colleagues, so uh, about 68% um, the benefit is coming from ocean and coast. Only 32% the benefit coming from terrestrial areas. That is why we need to take care of our oceans and coast rather than so terrestrial areas. So, then this is the first um, 
um, achievement in terms of the ecosystem services. After this, Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and UNEP adopted, UNEP adopted so, uh, this Millennium Ecosystem Assessment as a, a result. And after this, the TEB, CBD, and UNESCO IOC, the Marine ESP, and EU and IPDS. So, um, the TEB stands for uh, the Economics of Ecosystem Services and then Biodiversity. So, can you imagine that? So, nowadays we are um, trying to harmonize the economy and the city class. So TEV, a little bit the small the output of the, our effort to integrate it, so class and the economic ecosystems. So IPDS is like a, as an IPCC. Are you familiar with the, the, the agency IPCC? Yes. yes. IPCC is supporting of the climate change uh, impact, just uh, specifically the support to uh, the uh, uh, UNFCC. So, but we have the CBD and it's related is Convention and Annexes. But IPDS is the just to uh, the support to uh, the activity of CBD and disability activities. So IPDS stands for Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and uh, Ecosystem Services. So uh, last year, so uh, UN Assembly adopted the uh, SDG Agenda 2013. So uh, there are 17 uh, goals of, of the uh, SDG uh, goal set. It's, uh, so marine ecosystem services are not highlighted in the SDG goal set. So even though the so number 14 is the about uh, so, uh, sustainable development of our uh, marine resources and species, but the uh, ecosystem service concept has uh, could not be incorporated into the SDG systems. Yes, but you see, in, uh, in academic side, there are so many so publication and research out uh, and uh, so uh, this is the, uh, the mid 2000. There are rapidly uh, increasing so uh, uh, scientific output, and now is the uh, many uh, coastal countries they are trying to incorporate marine ecosystem concept, marine ecosystem service concept into the very special planning systems. But now it's just a small step. We, even though so we are staying at the beginning stage, I think that so in the near future, we will have this integrated uh, the management system by um, integrating some ecosystem service concept and then so special planning as a, a mechanism. So, but at this moment, uh, I am thinking that there might be the question about that question about differences between the integrated coastal management and marine spatial planning. Do you know the differences between two mechanisms? When you integrate all those zones or different areas that you're managing, then you're integrating it into one planning system. Yes, a great explanation about the difference between the two uh, different mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So, actually, integrated uh, coastal management is just coming from so uh, uh, coming from so uh, integrated management system of land and sea. Mm -hmm. But spatial planning, what is spatial planning? Is more to concentrate on the, our oceans. That is the first difference between the two concepts. And the second one is this. Uh, so uh, English is quite quite different. I C F M S P, right? <laughs> That's the second difference. But even though there are some uh, difference between two uh, the regions, but they have to share the the principle the main part. First one is the integrated, uh, first one integration. Second one is ecosystem based principle. And so on, um, um, stakeholder engagement. And the science and then policy integration. They are share the same principle, so in managing oceans and coast. 
So I don't think so. I I don't think that they they have um, differences in details. So they are they like the twins. It's like they come and they collide. They have shared the same principles, but so the space is space is just moved to the um, coast and then so the uh, ocean area. We can so apply the uh, modern spatial planning legend to high sea one Arctic areas. So the India is the um, so my colleagues to participate in the half uh, of uh, working group. So uh, nowadays is the um, the active the state members and then the sub sub members they are trying to how to deal with the spatial management on the Arctic areas, Arctic sea areas. Well, we can so apply the concept of the uh, marine spatial planning to the management of the Arctic areas or and the high sea areas. So that is this uh, um, relation uh, between the marine services and human impact and sustainable development. So you can see three different curves. So this is very <coughs> typical, largest curve, it's the linear curve, and this is the um, radiolactic um, threshold curve. So this is the um, uh, typical relation between the, uh, our activities and the impact to the, our ecosystems. But some activities make uh, this curve just like uh, the BP oil extent. So uh, after the BP oil so extent, so, so we could not see uh, this the, uh, kind of the, uh, we could not enjoy uh, this uh, kind of the marine uh, ecosystem services, uh, services and more. Could you understand that? Is this the difference between three curves? So so if you uh, if you develop the urban and coastal areas by building, so by construction of the new buildings and new facilities along the coastal line, so uh, pollution and pollutant is discharged into the coastal area is the uh, gradually, so so gradually, so uh, discharged into the area. That means is that our ecosystem might be deteriorated by the our activities. Step by step. That is the um, relation between the um, relation between the uh, um, proton, uh, proton discharge and uh, so uh, ecosystem um, in the state. And so oil spill, oil spill is just the one time oil spill can destroy our ecosystems. So. Uh, in eight years ago, so uh, we have we have site had very big as uh, so oil extent in west coast of our Korean Peninsula. So, uh, so during the recovery, so uh, the period, the coastal stakeholders they did not enjoy, they did not use any the marine resources anymore. So it's um, it took seven years to recover their own function, so to the other original so state. So that is the very position of the systems. That is the uh, impact on the ecosystem services uh, and the our so activities. So who is this trade-off? How do you say uh, why I so highlight the, the trade-off? So uh, this is one area. There is no any activities so uh, at this moment. But what is the uh, someone wants to want to be at the build up so wind farm? But some people want to fish uh, uh, in this area. There might be the conflict. So how do you deal with uh, this conflict? We can apply the modern service concept. So every service has its own values. So when you go to the hospital, so you pay the services from the doctors, from the nurses, right? So who have who have to make a decision on the price of their payment? So every service has its own values, its own price. 
just like this uh, our human host. So uh, ecosystem service has its own values. We can convert, we can convert <coughs> ecosystem works into our so monitoring market index. That's the Dallas or the VM or the mark and uh, so pound. Yes, we can convert all services. But so at this moment, so uh, uh, IDDS uh, and uh, their expert now uh, they are uh, trying to, to uh, develop the, the methodology so to the evaluation of the our ecosystem services. <coughs> we can trade off. So uh, when it comes to uh, this our area, so there are the fishing airport, there are some the uh, sand extraction and the wind farm, there are many activities are required to, uh, uh, there are many activities be, uh, from, uh, coming from uh, stakeholders. How to deal with the, the conflict? We can calculate the services. How, how much could you, uh, how much could you uh, get from the fishing airport? How much could you get uh, from the wind farm? How much money could you get from the sand mine? We can compare the, uh, the price, the values of the three uh, different activities. So, but the, the important thing is that so every uh, every activity has has its own some cost. For example, sand mine. So we can get the, the benefit from the sand mine. We can get the money from the sand mine, but sand mine might might give a very huge impact on our ecosystem, our fishing. So we need to compare the benefit and the cost. That is this about the trade of uh, so among uh, different expertise. It is a uh, difficult, or I am not, so. Do you think I am not able to explain the trade of this there? So uh, this is another one. So MPA, Marine Protect Area and Fisheries, they can so uh, the leach and harmonize the system. So uh, if the uh, the catching uh, the fishing effort, this is the, uh, if the catching effort is controlled uh, under the limit over their carrying capacity, MPA, Marine Protect Area, could be well managed. That is the um, the potential uh, potential uh, of the harmonization between the MPA and fisheries. But there, but compared to MPA and fisheries, we can say that marine energy uh, exploitation and fisheries um, is not easy to harmonize the two different activities. If you expand. Um, uh, Five years ago, um, in Korea, there was a very huge conflict about the, the, tidal, the uh, tidal power plant in the west coast. Very huge uh, tidal power plant. If you build a tidal power plant on the marine area, so uh, any other activities, including uh, fisheries uh, or MPA, they uh, could not be done in the areas. So that means is there are uh, less potential to um, harmonize marine energy exploitation and fisheries for these polyglotic areas. So I think that you are very familiar with the DIPSA framework. So this is built by the uh, European uh, Environment Agency in 15 years ago. So uh, that is this. Uh, this uh, framework is to explain the relation between the uh, economic activities and environmental state, environmental management. So DPSIR uh, stands for driving forces and pressure and state, and then so impact and then so response. So, um, so uh, people uh, living in coastal area, that means is the uh, discharge of the, of the the pollutant to uh, the, into the um, our coastal and ocean area. That means is the uh, it can be uh, function 
as a function, as a leverage to change our coastal environmental state. And that means is the uh, sometimes left tide and then high north area. That means is the uh, that means is negative impact on our activities. For example, so the close, closing of our beach and then so the reduction of uh, our the, the fisheries catch. So uh, this past this is the uh, to deal with this problem, this problem and uh, these issues. So uh, the, uh, so enactment of euro or the um, rearrangement of our management system. That is this our response. So uh, human, so human, uh, uh, the management of uh, our resources and species is our response. So there are three technical pillars of the uh, ecosystem service-based planning and decision-making system: assessment, evaluation, and application. I, as I mentioned, that the core part of the ecosystem services is uh, the trade-off as among the different activities. So before evaluation, we need to assess our so ecosystem uh, state. Ecosystem state is, is the uh, composed of structures and functions. So. Uh, Structure, that means is there are so many components in our marine ecosystems. Plankton, and then plankton, geoplankton, and the, the fish, and then big fish, and then bigger fish, and the humans. That is the structure of our ecosystems. And the function, this is the, function, this is the interaction, so it's among the component of our ecosystems. The interaction between the phytoplankton and zooplankton, interaction between the zooplankton and fish. That is the function. Function is the flow of energy. And so, um, when we, uh, if we assess the uh, structure and and then, uh, so, just the um, planning tools. So uh, is the and then partnership like a crystal ball. So, but so but I would like to highlight uh, highlight the assessment of structure and function of our ecosystem rather than supply and tools. So this is the, the last part of my the presentation. So uh, um, uh, in break time I talk to with uh, the Chris. So it's so, uh, about yeah, so, uh, Cambodian government, so uh, uh, their the legal mechanism on the special plan systems. So in July and August, so I was in Cambodia to support Cambodian government for uh, so one month. So to just to support more special planning for the Cambodian government. So uh, in 2013, so uh, we are one of the Asian, Asian networks for the region and and in the development. And then so um, the last week so uh, we organized some international conference on marine system services. And then in August in Busan is I think the very day is very day also. So in August there has been nice beach so along the, the coastline. And then so we organized a so third training program on uh, marine system services and training uh, uh, so special the plan. So Based on our the, uh, international the partnership, international operation, so uh, we sent some regional task force in you know, cooperation with the PMC. PMC is a regional possibility program so uh, uh, implemented by the um, some UNDP and IMO. So uh, we sent some uh, professors and students to support the Cambodian government in July and August. This area, the company area, so we calculated this, or we collected so the data the, from the, the research the report and the, from the local stakeholders. Uh, as I mentioned about the so importance of indigenous knowledge. So actually the, the, from the discussion, so meeting with the local stakeholders, we can we could collect very substantial data and information. So um, the, regarding the what is special plan? So based on the um, just our conceptual framework, so uh, we are also 
to follow this uh, this process to sketch the plan. And so, so we have at the time we have uh, we have provided different scenarios uh, for the management of the Cambodian local uh, or local area. So we can say that our tools is the um, can be modified some. Uh, can modify the final output by um, by modulating some uh, weighting factor of the our tools. That is original assessment of output. That is no weighting factors of each layers, each services. And this is convergent across the region of the, of the local areas. If the local stakeholders they would like to um, uh, they would like to conserve this area, that they do not want, they can. So get uh, this kind of uh, output, and so this is a development scenario of the local area. That is the um, we have contributed to the um, Asian uh, uh, areas in terms of the um, ecosystem service based on the spatial plan. But so uh, before, uh, so uh, in the first session, I uh, during the observation of the. Um, Professor Sackle's presentation. So I would like to share this uh, uh, issues in Arctic issues. So actually Arctic issues is very, very far away from uh, our mainland. But I think that climate change <coughs> might give us so, uh, there's a risk and opportunity. So in Korea, in China and Japan and Korea, we share the Chinese methods. We call it as a, as a um, we, we this is the risk and opportunity are, com are coming together. This is one time. So climate change might provide risk and so uh, opportunities. But there are some arguments of uncertainty about that. So Arctic area, Arctic state. And second one is that we don't have the uh, very strong uh, um, effective mitigation mechanism from the exploitation activities of the Arctic area, just like oil oil extraction and the fisheries, but we don't have any strong submitted mechanisms and hidden connection between the Arctic area and the uh, and other oceans and coastal areas. We don't have any so uh, 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 it's pretty the connection between the Arctic area and the non-Arctic areas. So that is very uh, conceptual framework, so how to deal with uncertainty from the uh, um, Arctic um, uh, change of Arctic uh, area. So, if I think that, so we can just combine the uh, so uh, ecosystem service planning, ecosystem services, and then so change of Arctic state. I think that there are many many possibilities to impact on our coastal area, our ocean area, and is related to our marine ecosystems from even by. So change of Arctic state, but it may be by climate change. Anyway. So that's why we need to focus on the uh, change of the uh, uh, state of ecosystems, even though it is uh, far away from our the language of our the, uh, real life uh, areas. So that is the um, I'm really worried about that. So the um, threat transfer to the non-Arctic state or non-Arctic non areas. So that is transfer from the Arctic area by exploiting, exploiting so oil, gas, and even the minerals. I think that it might be jeopardized, jeopardized some um, very um, balanced system of the Arctic area. If the balancing system is collapsed by um, combined, uh, driven by climate change and human activities, so I think that the threat is will be moved to an Arctic So one example is there's a pathogen. Right? So we can so in Siberia areas, uh, nowadays our society witnesses this new virus. So we don't have any infections to uh, so, uh, so the virus. But I, I think that, so if the uh, more exporting expertise expert in this area, I think that uh, and, and this kind of virus 
to the movie chair. The out of out the movie to the outside. So I turn out to Paris. That is the human condition I know for it. Thank you. Thank you. So really, I know Peter Salon. My talk um, was um, not for me to wait because so we were airing the way we were concerned. So, yeah. yeah, just a comment coming from working with accent issues. I think, and I think maybe that those were wrong, I don't know, but. The thing is that it's, it's still, you know, there's no consensus how, how to evaluate the ecosystem services. We have that problem in the Arctic Council and the way we're doing now, you know. You see, even between the Arctic states, you know, there's different opinions how to, to, how to look at the ecosystem services. Uh, I think that is one of the, the, the things to be considered and how to find consensus on how we do the evaluation. And maybe you can reflect upon that. You agree, I mean, that, that at least coming from one of the active states, I, I realized that that is a, a challenge. That was my first thing, and maybe also I would like to give you, could you give an example where we have seen a very successful uh, spatial planning and management, and where uh, uh, some example where it didn't succeed, and maybe why it didn't, if you just could come up with two examples? So I'll be saying about that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, yes, I know this uh, part of the Arctic uh, state members, and uh, so I think that yeah, so this kind of mechanism, this kind of the system, is could be applied to the um, cycle, the cycle, mm -hmm. and so applied to the um, um, Arctic area and the any other area with less data and information. Mm -hmm. So what we need to simplify is for our input uh, uh, of the um, the management. So even though we even though uh, so even though we even though we don't have uh, enough data and information, so we need to uh, to make a decisions based on our last and uh, information. I think that's uh, it could be a problem. So, uh, as I told you, so actually, um, ecosystem based approach to entire the ocean area is not is a very challenging. So, I I didn't witness the successful cases, but the successful cases means that this is the legalized mechanism, right? So actually many uh, experts and they are, are the challenging some small scale approach, but so I don't think they are so legalized this uh, management system, so could not be established yet. Yeah. yeah, please, I I don't know how you can actually help this discussion because we have actually discovered that when it comes to spatial planning and management. The aspect of implementation is one big problem. For instance, we realize that the priority of the government that is ruling is very, very important. And um, we know the difficulties in um, getting some of this information that you require the state of the art facilities and rigorosity in the side of the scientists or the social scientists and everybody who's going to uh, participate. Now, you get an information, you are trying to say, okay, this project or this thing you want to do is not uh, viable at that time or in that place, okay? It depends on the weak power of the government or for them to accept. For instance, you made mention of the uh, Korea, the instance of their NPA, and uh, so also in Vietnam, there's a similar issue whereby the Hongmu Island is a tourism center area. Now, the government is slow over it because it's valuable to them for tourism. Now, but if you go back to, for instance, from Nigeria, where we are from, 
No, we look at it in this angle. The government should have given them scientific reports in form of, let me just use this of PIA. If given them reports, they are expected to look at the pages and they have scientists who can interpret in the government. Or sometimes they throw this document away. Or sometimes they will engage experts who will doctor this report in their favor. Or in cases where this document is even real, and you still see the project going on, and part of the recommendation is the project is not viable. Then in this case, you say, okay, it's viable, but this is the mitigation measures. This is what you must do as post Now, the project is on, you are not seeing this thing, and you cannot, you have limitation with government on how you can do, you've done your part as expert. The rigorosity and the, what can you do when you see such implementation? That the programs you have uh, are scientifically put together is not there. What can you do in order to help in that situation? The project is ongoing, the programs you've recommended is not being considered. It's not supposed to what can you do in that situation? Yeah, so uh, I think that this current situation is, is there. We can see it is in many countries like uh, in many areas, even in Korea. So sometimes the, uh, I think they're higher level concern, higher level, so officers, higher level decision makers, the hands on um, sustainability of the management system, all the, the policies. So uh, I don't have any solutions how to do with the, so, Actually, this is very uh, complicated uh, issues in many countries, many areas. So when it comes to um, so, uh, Cambodia, so 15 years ago I was in Cambodia at the time, so I also supported the Cambodian government. And then two years ago I was in Vietnam to support the Vietnamese government. So uh, there are so many projects and programs, but this, I think this is one time project. And then, so this is the final output of the project and the process, and then, so it could not be um, incorporated into the, the legalized mechanism. As I told, as I talked with uh, Chris, I think that so legalized system is much more important than any other process, especially after completion of the, the small scale program, small scale project. So we can start. We can start from very small scale. So um, project. But after that, we need to uh, make a concerted effort to uh, this, uh, incorporate this output into the, our legal uh, mechanism. So, but I don't think that this is the best solution to solve uh, these issues. But sometimes I think there's uh, so, uh, support from the stakeholders and uh, very uh, Big pressure from our the stakeholders can so uh, 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 could drive uh, so our digital makers and users to accept so new legalized systems. Is that for have lunch or? <laughs> So as a private sector, so use this area, I have to pay the use fee. And plus the but my activity is <coughs> has a very negative impact on our ecosystem. I have to, to pay for additional um, some money. So uh, additional money to our government. We call it some so um, some um, peaceful 
conservation our uh, conservation of ecosystems. Conservation of ecosystems. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. So just at the time, so uh, we just we um, have a conventional solar application systems. Yeah. But I think that except on China, so uh, the any other countries, uh, they do not have any the calculation system of the ecosystem services. So based on the ecosystem sustainability, the cost, the uh, methodology, now is on the way of the of demand. So if you buy it, uh, it's been organized by the like, ES and the uh, D and other research agencies. Uh, the values for the resources are they standardized to make evaluation in many cases or, or what do you have to take into account in order to value mangrove or water or river? Ah, so uh, there are many methodologies. The first one, yeah, the first one is the purification uh, function. We so uh, if the mangrove is purified, some one. Uh, 100 kilograms or the organic materials. So we can so calculate so to purify this is 100 kilograms so organic materials. So how many of uh, how many wastewater treatment treatment facilities uh, is required? So that is this is the uh, the co cost of construction of the uh, wastewater treatment facilities. You can uh, it is. Uh, it is the equivalent to the purification purification services of our mangroves. That is, yeah. Do you do like a contrast in the, between a, a man-made uh, system right. and white uh, Right, right. That is one methodology. There are so uh, so many many methodologies to calculate the value of our existing services. We call it as a replacement methodology. So uh, and, and the last time, so I, I think that you will enjoy getting from our ecosystems, right? That is called the ecosystem services. Okay. Thank you so much for your listening.